The, the cable franchise that we went over at our last meeting. It was reviewed by Tom and by Golden West, and they both have approved it. I make a motion to approve Ordinance 704, second reading. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Well, I think what we'll do then is when we go into reports here in a minute, um, that be fine. Sounds good. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. All righty. So you guys got the reports in front of you guys. Uh, February. So just a decrease in some calls for services. Uh, we have 235 uh, this month, over the last 30 days, excuse me, there's a decrease of 32, averaged about 7.83 calls of service per day. Uh, the next thing I want to highlight is just our traffic stops that we made. We had 75, which was a decrease of 13, 25 of them were citations, which is a decrease of 4, were warnings, and 36, which was a decrease of 4. And verbal warnings was 21, which was also a decrease of six. <coughs> Another thing I want to highlight is the snowbirds. We issued 20 of them this uh, in the last 30 days. Uh, suspicious uh, vehicles and um, um, Jones, you mentioned. I, I want to readdress of what like what, what we base that on. So sometimes we'll call out a suspicious vehicle like if it's subplated, so meaning that the license plate doesn't come back what's in front of us. So we'll generally, it's someone who's trying to you know, hide from law enforcement because we can run the tag and okay. see if they have warrants or it's a stolen vehicle or if we think it's like a warrant subject is that's kind of, I was okay. kind of tracking to see how our deputies were doing it. So that's kind of what I found out of what suspicious vehicles kind of thing. Uh, with that, we had seven, which was an increase of two and suspicious activity. We had two, which was an increase of two. And um, the sorority subjects, we had nine, which was an increase of four in the last 30 days. Uh, case reports, we had 13, which was an increase of two. And then uh, in the last 30 days, we made two arrests. Um, for me, it's been a kind of crazy last 30 days, but just kind of helping with the shift with kind of high priority calls that have been happening around Hartford and stuff. So, um, so 
not much because of just like a lot of report writing for those sort of things of what we've, what's been kind of ha happening just a little outside of Hartford and not within city limits. So um, talking with the night guys, uh, we have a good group of dudes, super good dudes, uh, guys uh, who want to know what I know and what I hear and pass them on to them because they want to try to stop anything that's going on, if it's meth or a little bit of marijuana or, or, or drug drunk driving. So that's been kind of good to hear, just communicating with them, um, that they're like, what do you got? Give us something, kind of thing. Or like, what do you know? Because they're so new to this area and just filling in the <coughs> kind of info that I have. They've been appreciative as well, too, and um, I haven't heard much complaints from their side. I mean, is there anything that needs to be addressed with me that I need to pass along to the night guys or even the weekend guys? <coughs> Did we, oh wait, did we tick it Sunday? I know we called a snow alert, but did we tick it Sunday? Yep. Yeah. Just curious. Alright. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm assuming you got ticketed. Alright, we'll jump back up into applications, agreements, and hearings. And we are 705 public hearing. It's the first reading of ordinance 705. So this ordinance came about out of planning and zoning, and it's in our zoning regulations and covers on-premise signs. And for the last couple of meetings, planning and zoning board have been discussing it. Basically, it was brought about, um, one of our members noticed that um, really the amount of square footage allowed for a sign in our industrial properties, like our light industrial and our heavy industrial, is actually less square footage than what we would allow in just a commercial property, you know, like at the gas stations or a retail store. And you know, you think of industrial zone lots as usually being larger lots, so you think a larger lot sign could be placed on there, kind of stands to reason, but our ordinance actually gave them less square footage. So it was discussed by the Planning Zoning Board, and, and I agree that um, they believe they industrial zone property should be allowed at least the same as what common commercial property in town is allowed. So basically the only change we made to it is take out the current verbiage, and you can see the changes in red, and um, just replace it with the same verbiage as what commercial zone property has, which is two square feet per linear foot, which before was only one square feet per linear foot. So um, they, they, they <coughs> that, um, especially like if they have a larger lot, they, you know, definitely could have the same amount of signage because they usually would have larger buildings anyway than what a commercial property. So that's the change they're recommending to the plan or to your board. Do you have any motions? A motion to approve ordinance 705 as presented. Thank you. All right, discussion. Yes. Brandon? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Randall? Yes. Thank you. Yes. All right. All right, next we got second reading of Ordinance 703, Establishment of a Park and Recreation Board. Um, just kind of looking back from last meeting on that one, thinking through what we were talking about there. Um, Tom had, uh, had given us some more information on that, saying, hey, you know what, this if we set this up as a board, they're going to probably have more power than maybe what we originally intended, but it's something we're thinking about. And uh, we passed first reading knowing that we can make a decision coming into a second reading. And uh, Teresa is also included in our packet, um, the other format, basically the committee format for that. So um, I haven't, I can honestly say I haven't done a ton of work on this piece of things coming into this agenda. Um, Tom, I wonder if you could just give us a little bit of background one more time on, on what powers we'd be giving that board if we approve it as a board. Well, it, in essence, the, the park board would have full control of the operations of the parks. Um, under the ordinance, or under the statute that creates the board, um, says that the park board should control and supervise the public parks of the municipality. So. Um, 
course, the council is always going to hold the purse strings for their budget, but um, from a practical standpoint, they're going to operate the day-to-day -day, um, functions of the park. They could make the decisions if they said pools close on Sundays, they've got control of the parks, the pool will be closed on Sundays. Um, it's just a question, I, I think, for the council to, I mean, there's certainly communities that do that. Um, I, I likened it to library boards in a lot of communities where, you know, the council sets a budget for libraries, but the library board runs the library. Um, this, the same would be true here. I mean, you're going to set the budget items, but um, the, the park board would, would determine what's going to happen in the parks in terms of their operations and um, whatnot. So it, it's really a philosophical uh, issue as whether the council wants to give up that control. Um, or we want more, um, to have more of an advisory capacity, which would be the committee that would be able to meet and come back with recommendations to the council on, the, on some of those same issues, but they wouldn't have the authority to um, enact their uh, regulations as such, so. Okay, thank you. And Craig and Teresa, with, with some of those kind of things said, is there, are there things that pop up for you that you're thinking of right now? They've got another set of bosses. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean there's really always like the, the day to day stuff. I mean, I don't know how a board's going to be able to regulate that. I mean, just like today, we found a piece of equipment that needs to be replaced. You know, you get quotes on it and been handling it for years like that. And mm -hmm. So, I guess. If we, you know, if that would go that way, I guess it'd just be, you know, they'd have to be in communication with me if they had stuff that they wanted to get done. Otherwise, I guess I would assume it'd still be ran the same way. I'd have the guys out mowing and doing the stuff that needs to get done without having them to look it over. But I guess they probably could say, yeah, you're mowing too often or you're not mowing enough, you know. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I think the example I gave was they could say, we don't want the city to mow this year. We want to. We want to get bids and have a third party. We think that that would be more cost effective. Essentially, they could do that, assuming they had money in their budget to do that. Okay. So, yeah. I don't think that was the exact. And, and I don't know how you'd allocate that. Be <coughs> work here is care how you allocate the funds. Right. You know, if city crews are then doing work in the parks, does it come out of that budget from the park board as opposed to? It's public yeah, works as it is now. So. Mm -hmm. so I assume that board would they would do the hiring for the swimming pool or not? That's would that be their? I, I would think that would be under their purview. Yes, and they're they they have the authority to hire employees. Again, it's always subject to the. So then, really, the sports complex committee nonprofit would answer to the board, and not necessarily have any discussions with city council. If they're equipment, right, right. Well, if they're holding the butt. Well, I mean, as far as tournaments go, as far as scheduling the fields, I mean, right. they they all get in the back seat mm -hmm. yeah. to the board, right. right. Really, it's just turning over the keys to the board, mm -hmm. and and it's up to the board how much influence they do or don't want to have with the day to day, the baseball field, the softball field, the soccer fields, the swimming pool, the playground equipment. Turtle Creek, I mean, all the rest. It just depends on the board how much they want to, I guess, drive the car. Okay. And that brings up an interesting point because you talked about the pool and, and that piece too. Are there ways, Tom, right now we've got, you know, we've delegated a lot of that, like the hiring authority for certain things like that over to Teresa. Um, can that board, and, and Craig just mentioned, you know, some of the day to day things that he just takes care of. Can they also do that and, and delegate those things out just yes. like we would? Oh, to Teresa or Craig? Yes. They, they could, yeah. You know, I think the, the hardest part of that is where you figure out how the budgetary aspects of that work. But sure. Yeah. I think there could be a lot of confusion to begin with, you mm -hmm. know, trying to work through all the... Who does what? You know, who's going to do what? Are they, you know, what do they really want to do control of or, you know, I think they're... 
Well, and I guess the other thing I would say is, I guess if someone was really interested in this becoming a board, I am seeing attendance or interest in being here to say, yes, we want a board. Um, that, that they have that passion, that they have that desire to really embrace that whole aspect. Yeah, and you know, it would be, we had a few members show up the first time we talked about it and kind of talk, gave some support for that and talked through some of that. That was before we had, uh, that was basically in kind of draft version before it was even the first reading out there. Um, I think the other thing we got to think about is that even if, if this council likes that setup, I mean, we got to be thinking 10 years down the road and, and what that does for the city if, if you know, for future councils and all of that, if it's the right setup or not. So, I think our intention from the beginning, though, was not to have, turn the keys over to somebody and to have a <coughs> group that would give us basically advice, and then we would we would consent on what they what they wanted. I that's what I guess I thought our intent was at the beginning. Mm -hmm. I agree. So with that said, we get we get two options really with the second reading on, on there. Oh, uh, just one thing I thought of, and I think I sent you a text on it. Maybe just the, a board like that could be involved with your subdivision reviews too, just with the park systems that developers are proposing and how that fits into you guys' overall plans for that. You know, I thought as you guys have been discussing, I've thought about that, and I think that'd be a really good duty to have group doing that um, because I think I think we could use use some of that during the reviews would you need a board for that though or, or they work today? no but a, but a group that's focused on the park system the park system that can give that type of input into those subdivisions I think it would be valuable whether it be by ordinance or by committee, but yeah. somebody, for sure. Yeah. So I think we got three options actually with the second reading. We can either, we can approve it. I'm not feeling a, a strong sense of approving it as a board, but, um, but if anybody wants to make a motion, we could. Um, we could deny it and close that piece of it out, get it done. Or we can table it if we want it as an option for a second reading down the road, not have you know through the first reading. Um, I I envisioned it more as uh, as an advisory committee. I mean, I think that honestly, one way to work our way into this is if we started off with an advisory committee, and we got a couple years into it, and things were just working great, and it seemed like they're a well-oiled machine, we could. We could, or that council could, at that time, turn it into a board. You know, we give them more authority to. I'll make a motion to kill ordinance seven hundred three. Second. That might not be the right term. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little hard. Care to find another better? <laughs> I understood what he meant. <laughs> Sorry for being here with brothers. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Could have showed your brother a little bit. Any other discussion on that? Okay. We'll vote. 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 Wait for a second reading. We still had a first reading that was approved. So, yeah. so just wait. So this is a motion to not approve the order. Right. right. So a yes vote is to deny it. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. We'll vote. O'Hare. Yes. Keel. Yes. Randall. Yes. Vernon. No. Jones. Yes. And Ryan. Yeah. Okay. So the other item that's in, it's not on our agenda, so I don't think we'd take action on that today, is um, 
is to bring back, but we've got that in our packet basically to look at this as a as as a committee instead. Do you want to look at that next meeting? Have discussion about a committee then? Okay. Do we have to appoint a committee, or is the committee just something that happens? Well, the I would like it to be appointed. Okay. I think I think it should be a, a, a committee that's appointed and approved by the city council. If you kind of follow these bylaws, it's appointed by okay. the mayor and approved by the city council, but we could look through this, maybe a little, read through this sure. in more detail and see if that's what you want to do yep. at our next meeting. If you do, then then it's to find people to sit upon the board and, and go that direction. So, so we can have more discussion about a committee at the next meeting. And, and on the agenda? Yep. Sounds good. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, we'll move to Chamber of Economic Development Report. Thank you, Clark. Hi. So you have my information in the packet. Um, so I'm still continuing to meet um, the next few weeks with some additional committee members. I think I've hit all board members thus far. Um, working on contacting Golden West because there are some emails that are getting rejected or going into spam filters. So trying to get that fixed through Golden West for our chamber members. Um, continuing with the budget process, um, we made some headway on accounting today for that uh, group of folks. Um, the Development Corporation, or it should be Foundation now, excuse me. Um, city tour we had last week um, went very well. Um, and as you see in the information here too, Lakita Makita is no longer being called that. They recently uh, announced their name change of Sioux Metro Growth Alliance. So it's better to incorporate um, both areas. Um, attended their annual meeting where they announced that and continuing to work on the Envision 2025 invoicing and retention efforts there. So that's where I'm at right now. That's good. Good, so far so good. We talked before the meeting, but. Yes, it's going well. Things are going well. Yeah, getting into different um, passwords for different accounts. So that was a little challenging at first, but we're getting there. Um, other than that, been talking with some future members already that want to join, so we'll send out some emails on that. Hopefully they'll go online now and join. Um, so yeah, I mean, going really well, I think. Okay. Yeah, by the way, we've been we meeting weekly. Gabby just hasn't been able to make, but you know, trying to meet each week, at least via Zoom and um, touch base, you know, make sure. Everyone knows what she's doing and we're in the right direction, so that's going well. Yep. You're doing good, I think. Haven't dropped the balls yet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually doing well, so oh, we're going to take away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. All right, we'll move to the city engineer report. Yeah, Thank you, Mary. Um, I'm not sure exactly where to start today, but uh, I'm sure all of you have been notified that uh, you guys are, the mayor's rescinded our appointment as city engineer, and we're here tonight just to give our final report and just want to just make sure that we're not doing things on the wrong foot with you guys. Um, but we do, as I understand, we are going to be appointed until next week is next Friday, I think, with the day. Um, but we just wanted to express our appreciation for all the past business that we've had with you, the past relationship we have had with you. We hope that there's still opportunity to work with you folks in the future. Um, we still have, as you know, we have a long history with the city. We had really good understanding of your infrastructure. We feel we're leaving it in a good place for you folks. Um, if there's any opportunity at all down the road to work on projects, whatever those might be, we would always be wanting to help you with those. And we just want to leave on a good note with you folks and, and uh, we're, we wish we could have met your expectations and we understand that you want to seek those services elsewhere and we understand. Um, I think I think I would ask though that we had maybe a meeting next week because we do have some ongoing contracts and we need to talk about how you guys want to finish those out with us. So, um, but again, we just I wanted to just make sure. <coughs> Don't leave as enemies, but yeah. stay as allies. So. And you know, just to reiterate, you know, Mitch said, you know, we uh, 
Um, you know, we've been with our group for a long time, and you know we've uh, you know we've we've tried to steer you in the right direction the whole time, and you know that's our intent. And we didn't mean to be in any any way contentious to you. Um, you know, we meant to advise you uh, professionally. That's what we are as a professional advisor for you, and you know just that. And so. Um, you know, we've uh, we've been very fortunate to work with you guys for the years, these past years, and we extremely we feel extremely fortunate. You know, it's disappointing to us, obviously, um, but uh, like Mitch said, you know, we want to work with you to to work out your transition and whatever that takes. Um, you know, because we've got files, we've got maps and things like that that we need to pass along to you. Uh, and whatever that is, I, I would imagine there's going to be down the road, there's going to be a need for us to you know, pass on information to your next engineer that you're planning on working with. And, and you know, we'll do that. That's, that's for us here to, you know, we'll share what we, what we can. So, and, uh, you know, th like I said, thank you uh, for everything so far. And, and hopefully we can still move forward with the other agreement that you've discussed today to, for the wastewater. And, uh, we'd love to continue doing that. We feel strongly that we have a strong, solid team for that. Uh, and, you know, I feel that uh, that we're going to give you the best results for that, with that design team. So, um, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And I would say, too, I just want to show my appreciation for everything you guys have done. Um, it, it's been, yeah, we've been working with you for the last five years. But your history with the city goes goes way beyond that. And, um, like we talked today, um, and we had you know a conversation on the phone earlier too. And and your candor and your professionalism has been has been great. And so I mean, you know, when I say that that our our relationship has been strained or contentious. Um, there's there's been times where you can just feel kind of a general dissatisfaction or or a feeling from, from this side of the table, you always handled those things professionally. I want to make sure I go on record on saying that. Um, Thank you. I felt that uh, it was, it, our conversations, especially during city council meetings, had gotten to a point to where the distraction was, was holding us back from being able to continue to move forward as a city. So, um, so I made that decision that you know what, obviously it looks like we're looking for something a little bit different, so let's let's get through this and, and do something a little bit different. But, um, but I can't say enough how much I appreciate everything you guys have done. And I do want, I want that to be a good relationship going forward because we need good partners. Um, and even if we bring in a different firm as, as we intend to, to do our city engineering, we need, we need to be able to reach out to you guys and, and take a look at things as a, as a maybe a third party review or you know, doing special projects down the road to, to engage you in that. Sure. And who knows? It, it, I've seen that happen before. Sometimes it doesn't always go well and you get some right back in. And I fully understand well, that. So I, I definitely want to leave his allies. And it's a buzz too. So thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to stick around and help you through the individual requests for the question that was in. If there's any questions on the plus division, plan to get there. Okay. I think also, I mean, now's probably as good a time as any. I spoke with John and Mitch today. Um, um, Chuck's kill was there with when we, when we visited. Um, my intention is, I know, you know, you see on the original agenda, we had some action items on there. My intention was to move those to a special meeting next week. I was kind of targeting for Monday and Wednesday, but I wanted to look for from the group what what works well. Um, during that special meeting, the agenda items would roughly basically be we'd have um, we do an appointment for a new city engineer and hear from that group a little bit about their philosophy and, and what their what their general line of work is, how they do things. Um, but then also we'd start to look over at um, the wastewater treatment action items that we have going on. And um, one of them would be, obviously, Stockwell's 
Forest Water Treatment Agreement. And um, I know they'd like to, John and Mitch, like to come in and make sure that they talk and speak on that and give us a chance to make some decisions there. And then I'd also have a, um, another engineering company that would like to come in and, and propose a feasibility study. Um, not a full, not a full agreement, but a feasibility study. So, generally, that would be some of those action items. We could also, as Mitch pointed out, if we needed to add in and get some council action on how to handle some of these, these future contracts and some of that, I, I completely support that. Um, whatever business needs to be taken care of as far as engineering goes, I think we cover in that meeting. So, um, with that said. I was thinking Monday or Wednesday night of next week. How do, how do, how do things look for everybody? Wednesday was better for me than Monday. I have a change of reading on Monday. I can make Wednesday work. I think so, unless everybody's got a different time. I should be able to be back in town by that time, I think. Say, how, how long are you out of town, Hannah? Well, probably gone all week. We gone all week, leaving early in the week, coming back pretty much five to seven. I mean, tell everybody, everybody here on camera how long we gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we gone all, all week. Gone all week. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't get immediately uploaded. <laughs> People thought. <laughs> no, I'll be, I'll be gone all week. There's nothing Monday through Friday that works for me. So. Okay. Period. Well, I want to be open to that because um, I know these are big decisions, and um, if it's something you feel strongly you want to be here for, I don't want it to uh, be something that you don't need to let my vacation hold up. Save progress. It's like Saturn, yeah. I was just saying it was church night. That wasn't just, you know. Well, twice a week is plenty, though, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you what, I need no more off. You're always miss one. That's on camera, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, Wednesday's fine. Or, yeah, you said Monday didn't work for you? Yeah. Wednesday? Wednesday. So, Teresa, yeah. Craig, John, and Mitch. Wednesday's fine. Wednesday was fine. Part of okay. meeting, but I can just get that. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll plan on that Wednesday at seven. Okay. All right. Any other items under here? Thank you. All right. We'll move to credit report for public works. <coughs> And the only thing to touch on a little bit is uh, the street lights downtown here. We had, uh, last week was, um, I think Monday or Tuesday, Sioux Valley had a fault on a light down by the south bar down there, and they called me over to take a look at it. And they had to cover off, and we were looking at it, trying to decide whether to try to find the fault or what. And there was probably from day one when it got installed, they only put two bolts in it to hold the base. We're supposed to have four. Um, then on the pole, it only had three left in there. Um, and so I thought, well, I'm going to go check some of the other ones. So I went over to check the one by the seniors. That one is all there, but it's pretty rusty on the inside. And I went over to by the uh, four way stop here. And that's, I believe, the first picture on that pole. And that is the bottom of it that is completely rotted away on one side. Um, they're pretty bad. I couldn't get this door open on this one here. Um, and the other one went over here, took a picture. The other one, these, these pictures are the two worst ones, but they are really close to just about falling over. Um, look back at some of the stuff today on the Centennial, and it looks like they were put in probably in the 50s or 60s. That's when they been, been put in, because that's the pictures that, are, that we could see anyway, as far back as what we could go by. So they've been a long time. So did some checking. Um, 
Uh, solar lights we got, they do make a retro kit for them now, so you can switch them over to 110. So we, you could have that option to do with that with them. Um, Sioux Valley will come and replace them. I believe they'll work with us to get these other ones out of there. Um, they'll put their poles back in. They're not going to be the, they'll be like what's down in Part T, that blue wooden pole, I think they get on a black one or so <coughs> uh, with the Cobra light on it. Um, they will come in and do that for us. Uh, we do have to leave a, a green space out there, five foot green space, so if they ever have to work on it, they can get to it. We can't concrete around them. Um, so that's an option to have them just replace them like they are, or you know, with new poles and just do that and we just stay in the same contract. Um, the other option um, would be to bore power basically underneath all the lights, all these uh, decorative lights and see if they, you know, do that. It'd be about 30 to 35,000 to bring power from that pole over on, uh, on the alley there board under and bring drop something each one of these lights down here and then retrofit them over 110. Don't know what kind of light they would give off. Um, that was one option I was talking to, or something I was talking to Sioux Valley about is maybe um, cutting power on these five lights that are lit up right now and just see what kind of light we are getting with these because even if you switch them over to 110 or buy new lights that are actually 110, they're still going to be the 20 watt fixture. On them. So we don't know how much light we'd actually get off of them for security downtown at nighttime. You wouldn't want to leave them solar because if you left them solar, two days there might, you might not have lights for a week, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so that's some options out there. I guess I just want to see which way you want to pursue it before I start uh, looking into it more. If you just want to go to Sioux Valley and have them get on it and, and put them back kind of like they are with their lights and poles and, and just leave the other decorative ones like they are. So. Or if you want to pursue boring it and with that boring we'd be we'd take out the concrete ourselves and we pour it ourselves and do all that stuff as much we did as much as we can just the boring and the you know electrical part we can't do so so these numbers are pretty pretty rough i mean they're probably pretty close but <coughs> until we get actual start getting things locked in and getting numbers um on it, so. yeah. here's a crazy idea what would it take to Bust all the sidewalk out, move the curb back, and just ditch switch in power lines, and then report the curb and make, make Main Street white. I think by the time we get all that, you're going to want to. I was, I was thinking about that, you know, as far as the reconstruction part of it. If you did that, you would want to raise that curb about two inches probably, because there are some pretty, there are some slopes out there that are not ADA compliant. Um, so if you went in and started tearing out curb, you'd have to make it ADA compliant. You'd have to make sure everything ramps are in place and all that stuff. So you'd have some pretty good expense in it. If we'd leave the curb and just pour out, pull out the concrete, I mean, that'd be an option to just do that and just you know, do minimal boring. Depends on where the gas line's at, stuff like that. I mean, we don't have it. I don't have anything open. This just, just came up last week. Or we're we're going to have power on both sides of that street, I just assume. Make Main Street wider. If we're going to go to that cost, thirty-five thousand bucks to to bore. Yeah. I'd rather spend thirty-five thousand bucks and tear that apart and make it wider. Yeah. If you start tearing into that, I mean, if you start getting into the asphalt at all, we do have a clay sewer line underneath this portion that you'd want to probably. You're looking at some serious money once you start getting into doing it the right way. I mean, yeah, what is it? One what? Yeah. One more. I'm, I'm, I'm with you there, Mark, though, because I... It, it drives me nuts. Every time I drive out there with traffic, it drives me nuts. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> Trucks yeah. are getting bigger. Yeah, no, it would be a major reconstruction, redoing all the concrete and everything like that, because you want to, you you want to redo a lot of the sidewalk and just get everything done right, because like I said, the slopes ain't right. Um, there's a lot of issues with it. I mean, this was put in before AD was ever... Thought. If we're going to make an investment in downtown, that's what the investment should be, in my opinion. So. Can I ask a question real quick? I'm new. Um, with this, would this have anything to do with like um, downtown Hartford? Because they're doing a master plan to do some changes in downtown. <clears throat> would that fall under that too, possibly? It could. Because I know that they're looking at a master plan, I believe, this 
Wednesday night or next Wednesday night. And they're meeting with ISG to talk about some different opportunities and maybe some monies or grants that they can get to help with downtown Hartford. So I don't know if that would benefit with the lighting aspect of things. Yeah, I'm not sure what the scope of that is, but um, it, it could all fit together. What's the cheapest option? So I think the best option right now is just to have Sioux Valley come back in and replace the lights. And then if we do a street construction, then do it the right way and get the lights, get the power and everything and do them right. So what are they charging? Two grand, 1500 we get it's uh, so much per month on it. I think he had that in that. No upfront cost though. No, I no, would say it would no, be no cost no. to replace to the pole. It's just part of our contract, right. ongoing maintenance. They come yeah. in. I mean, we pay so much a pole right oh, now for ongoing maintenance. Yeah. Yeah, that would all stay the same. They just come in, tear out the poles, and put them back. That's my vote. With new ones. And that's even changing them to like what they got up there. On. It'd be like part T. They, they've only, Sue Valley only keeps like two different style lights okay. anymore. So yeah. Yeah. that's the two choices you get. The, yeah. yeah. Um, I think those are tunable. What I mean is you can change the wattage on them. So we could lower, we could put those cobras and lower the wattage down. I think you get better. I think they got a 70 watt one that you could put in there. So Yeah, and you can dial it down a little bit. Yep. I think. And they're, they're somewhat, when I say tunable, you can have them illuminate the street and not the buildings. Mm -hmm. Then I think you'd actually get better. I think the decorative lights would actually work better. Yeah. I'll uh, just get a hold of Jason tomorrow and just start working out with him and get him to place the way the original. You know, go back with their lights. So, so we're paying for these now. So it's not. Yeah, like, yeah. We're not increasing, really. We're not going to. No, there will be no cost difference in what we pay right now. Yeah. But I think Mark's on to something if we're going to. But that's a. That's something we're gonna have to give some thought to what we're gonna do. Because I'm sure you gotta leave the businesses so much for, I mean, there's um, there's things that are gonna have to be taken into account, right? You, you, might, want to, you might want to consider call, uh, traffic calming where you put the bump outs and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. You know, like where you're end of your blocks, and it's, I mean, it's not good for snow removal, but it's it's great for <laughs> for traffic calming, you know, stuff like that. So. Right. The bump outs, yeah, right. Trucks will start getting smaller again as gas gets expensive. Do you need a motion on? I think it's just general maintenance. I'll just go ahead and, as maintenance, I'll just go ahead and have them start working on getting those changed out. And if we were to make a decision down the road to, to do some of this, they could still, if they just move those lights, if we decided to do some more work or widen down Main Street at some point? Yep. Okay, sounds good. That sounds good. And then the only other thing is, uh, Solari Sioux, when you get the bids on that, they opened them up last Thursday. Um, I don't think Sioux Falls has actually accepted the bids yet. The company is Aztec. Um, first time they've ever, Sioux Falls has never had them before. Um, so it'll be a new company, they're out of Minnesota. They've been around for quite a while. They've mostly been doing, oh, highways, work for the counties and states, stuff like that, because they just do straight runs. They like them, but they came in at a really, they were 120,000 less than um, Missouri Petroleum and about 700,000 less than um, um, International, or Intermountain um, Slurry Seal. Hmm. So the price came in good, um, just crunching a few numbers with what I had to work with that day. We were gonna be low, and I think I got that other one sent out that said that we were probably, I wanna say 10, 15,000 below our budget. So. So the price is getting good. So they allow you to add a few more blocks on? You, uh, there was an issue last year. We did add some last year. It seemed like in previous years, you're like, we came in under budget, so yep. let's add some more blocks. And that's something I'll bring up because yeah, yeah. for budget, because sure. every year we're going to get more and more. Right. I mean, so right. if we've got this much budgeted and we feel comfortable with spending that much money, yeah. and we just go to the a contractor and say, you know, can we add on this block here or something right. that we're going to do next year and was just get it last year they won't let you do that? Um, like, we did last year. You did? Okay, yeah. all right. Yep. All I think right. we've done it pretty much every year if they come below budget, but if sure. they're right there at the numbers, then we... Gotcha. I'm going to have to double crunch everything too and make sure, um, and make sure there's not something that got done last year that we weren't expecting. Sure. And sure. Um, get it put in, so... So, but I'll have that ready for next time. We have to wait for Sioux Falls to accept it before we can go ahead and accept it. So. And that's all I got in my report. That's not what I'll be Thank you, Greg.
I was just going to give an update on the election. Um, Jeremy submitted his petitions. He was unopposed, so he will be the mayor for two more years. Um, we didn't get any petitions on the other four open positions. So what that means is that you four will continue in your same capacity until the position is either appointed or the next annual election. So, and an appointment is only good until the next annual election too, so come next year, we're gonna have all six of those seats up for election. That's what you mean. Right, and you can resign, you know, if you don't wanna stay in your seat, and then we'll be forced to appoint. Oh, so we only have to start one year, not two years? <laughs> Just We're only on for one year then. Stop. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you got anything else, Karen? No, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. Good deal. Wheels are spinning. Yes, they are. Yeah, I thought there'd be a COVID or a cold weather extension for those petitions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, thank you very much. Have, is there actually? No, okay. there's okay. All I have. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you. All right, and we got Teresa's report. Um, well, but the other thing I want to touch upon that's different in my report is I just want to let you know that uh, we did do interviews for the part-time office position and I would like to go in to executive and kind of update the council and those candidates and maybe hopefully um, do put an offer out there. So we'll talk about that later. Um, just wanted to give you two, a quick update on grants that we have sitting out there because we haven't touched on some of them. The Fike and Rec Trail, I did submit the Wellmark grant and we're working on the one to um, the Game Fish and Parks, which is due this month, later this month, so we'll get that in. And then and our storm shelter slash concession stand for the sports complex, still have not received any word on that. Um, FEMA is supposed to have their decision made by May. Um, just to keep in your back of the mind, you know, once we know about that, we'll talk about the sewer of Western again and what that scope of that project we want to be. So um, that will be coming up. And then um, we are working, we did get the grant for the lift station, um, for, the, for the generator for the lift station on Mickelson Road. So um, we're working about um, putting a bid together to go out to bids. Um, I have asked CCOG if they can check with um, FEMA to see if we can go off like the state bid or like source well. Um, they're checking into that because there is one on there that Craig found that would meet our needs and kind of save us that bid process, but we're not sure if FEMA will let us do that, so we're checking into that. So we'll get something going here on that. And the only other thing that's not on my report that I kind of wanted to bring up and just have you guys start thinking about is that the land we have, the new land we purchased for the wastewater treatment facility, um, obviously we're probably not going to do anything this year, you know, get anything built on it. So just keep in mind we probably will have some maintenance costs with either spraying it or, you know, mowing it or keeping, you know, um, doing our maintenance on that. Um, but also think about it was approached by an individual that may um, want to lease or rent that for this year. I don't know to what capacity, I don't know any details of that. Um, but um, I said, if you, you know, see if you guys, you know, if you want to do something, you know, get a proposal to us and see if you guys are willing to entertain that. So um, we'll go from there. Just then we'll keep that in the back of your mind. Either we'll need to do something like that or we'll definitely have to. Take care of John. You know, I, mean, I, curious what you're, what you do, I, I don't see you do, you know, turning anything this year, so I yeah. suggest you far, you know, run up to the farm. I did kind of talk yeah. with Mitch because I wanted to make sure there wasn't anything that, and Mitch said maybe the only thing would, if you would move forward with like a building design or something, maybe some soil boring <laughs> for the building, um, that's just, you know, yeah. the soil, soil but, boring, so it shouldn't interfere with really anything. We did. Uh, to elaborate on that, we did some preliminary borings to get an idea of what kind of soil we had out there. Um, but once you decide to zero in on the, the actual locations of the building, we'll actually you know, drill the <coughs> borings at the corners of the building. 
Um, and so that that's what he's referring to. So I just have a condition on your um, lease that you uh, are allowed to do that. Yeah. And you know whether to me I would still suggest you pay crop damage on even that. Um, relatively low cost, and at least that way you don't have to spray and maintain it. Right. So the rest of the plan. How's that work, Tom? We gotta we gotta <coughs> advertise that. <building. coughs> land for rent, right? We, we just can't pick a guy that says, hey, will you, will you rent that to me? Can we? <laughs> well, I think, what do we have, 20 acres there, John? Yeah, well, about 20 on one and 15 on 35. Is the 15, is that tillable or is that just? Yeah. It is. Okay. It is tillable. Um, well, you have to put it out for a proposal of some sort. I mean, assuming the Whoever's farming Max property, that would make sense to, to at least encourage Thanks. them to. They expressed interest. Yeah. And I'm not sure if this is for farming or for pasture or what it is exactly the use I'm, that it's going to be. I'm just trying to think because the, the land we had east of Central States that we rented out, I believe there's a crop on it, or not found third. And we went through a, yeah. I think it was a seal, was it, I want to say it was sealed bid. We did, yeah. Yeah, at least that property yard. Oh. I don't know whether that raised any eyebrows if he just ran it for, I don't even know what going around is right now. It's probably 300 bucks an acre now. Well, he, I mean, he just got a little he, unique because you may have some, I mean, <coughs> you may have need to use the property at some point potentially during the year. So, I mean, it's, there's some no. risk on the farmer's part. We would have to pay crop damage, but. I don't know. We can put a proposal together to for something to think about, though. Yeah, because next month they're going to want to go, so. Yeah. Guess we better start thinking about it pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we, we definitely want to start looking toward a lease option and uh, some, of those, some of those provisions built in it for crop damage and access for soil mining or whatever needs to be done. But I, I think if we don't open it up, though, for a sealed bid, if you just hand it off to whoever, mm -hmm. so there's enough farmers around here, somebody's going to ask who's farming it, and then that person's going to ask what they're paying in rent. And I think I think it's just going down the, <coughs> I think it's going down the muddy road if you just hand it off to one guy that asked about it. So that's just me. Because then you, whether that guy would or not, if you're a guy or a gal, Say it's two hundred fifty bucks an acre. Whoever's asking questions would say, "I give you three mm fifty." -hmm. And then where do you go with that? Is there any issues in access, John? I don't think so. Okay, no. they can get through. They get through the ditch to get into the that yeah. twenty acres. The south, the south parcel has an access easement, so oh, that's right. That's you know, we all the way to the driveway, right. but you know, they would have to drive over some corn and stuff to probably do that. So it would be a lot cleaner if you could go with the existing farm. That he's been farming it, but uh, you're right. I don't, you know, I don't know your legal requirements. So <coughs> we want to have the lease, the lease agreement drafted before we go to any kind of seal. Right. Yeah. We'll, we'll can work with that. Yeah. We'll get one to you. So to put on the Maybe that's on your special week. meeting agenda. Okay, so we'll put on. Or if you want a special meeting or, yeah, or the next agenda. Kind of yeah, we can get some. Yep. It's more business time. <laughs> He needs to get longer and longer. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get out of this one then. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. You see some other things. Nope, there. nope, that, that's all I have. Um, those short term loan options. Can you oh. touch on that? Yeah, if you want me to. So, um, in your computer box, um, so I did go out and um, contact all three of the local banks here and, and said, you know, if the city was looking at doing some kind of short-term loan, and I threw out there 18 months to kind of pay our engineering costs if we do, you know, for our wastewater treatment facility, the engineering, um, you know, what what could they do for us as far as rates and options? And um, if you notice um, in your box there, basically all three ba banks came out with three different scenarios. Um, Great Western was kind of a straight bank loan, you know, with a fixed rate of 3.25%. Uh, Reliabank uh, is actually a line of credit, so you know, 
you just draw upon it as you need it, going it with a rate of 2.5%, and U.S. Bank had a, a bond anticipation note is what they're proposing. It's basically a short-term bond sale, um, and their rate is at 0.71%, which is a really good interest rate. Um, you could see on there with the comparison chart of what we would have to have for collateral and then what the fees associated with it. Um, I think Relia Bank and U.S. Bank both give us really good options. Uh, with U.S. Bank, the good thing about them is interest rates really low. Um, there's more upfront costs because with bonds, you have to have a bond council write them. And then, of course, they have their bank council review them. So there's some more upfront costs. But at that interest rate, even paying that much money up front, I think will still save on interest. So, um, like I said, that was a really good option to throw out there. So, um, <laughs> if we are thinking about doing something with a short-term loan, um, U.S. Bank kind of looks like the, the best proposal, in my opinion, on it. Have Karen review it, too, and kind of talk it over. And that she agrees as it well. It looks like it, but... Have you ran any scenarios? Because I, you're not going to find a calculator on the internet. No, and that's why I said. All I did was a simple interest thing. calculation. You can see the interest, but, mm -hmm. and I put in my notes, and it really all depends on, too, with reliving, how much you draw down at a time. You know, if you're only drawing a few thousand those first few months, you're not paying much interest there, but you're paying more on the back side. So it really depends on how much you draw down, how fast you draw down. So. There's that variable there. You're right. I mean, eight thousand. So. <clears throat> Look at the eight thousand dollar upfront costs. Yep. Yep. Yeah, exactly. The interest rate gets your attention. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. But, but there are more upfront costs. Yep. Exactly. No disrespect. No, not taking. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. All right. Well, that's perfect. I think it's just good food for thought. I just want yeah. To I'm say, obviously, we're not doing anything at this point, but yep. um, I'll, I'll let the banks know and. Uh, Hopefully it will work with us when we are ready to move forward with something. Okay. All right, we'll move to new business. We've got Review the County Plan for Lot A, Track 1, the Trustees Edition. So, Question and motion. Yeah. so this is a plan and it's gone through P&Z. Not in the city, it's you know, outside city limits, but within our growth area. So once again, um, it has to go through the city before it can move on to the county. This is about a mile and a half north of Central States. Um, they're plotting off just kind of that corner piece, as you can tell on the map. Um, they have signed a pre annexation agreement, which is required, so I do have that signed in here with me. And Planning and Zoning did approve it at their meeting last week. And this is just for the sale of land. Yeah, so what there's the no is that there's, this, there's no construction tied to this. There's no. How does it, so when it, so let's say this goes through and sells, any, any type of building for it wouldn't. Come back to us with it or no, no, no. So it's still in the county. county, they still have jurisdiction over, yeah. but since we have platting jurisdiction <clears throat> to plat off anything within our growth area, the plat needs to come and get approval from the city. But, yeah. but as they sell and build on it and whatnot, that all still goes through the county, it's in their jurisdiction. But they got to sign the annexation agreement that when the city limits gets there, we touch them. Yes, right. yes, if we ask them to, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. whatever, if, we, if the city gets to them. The city then, goes out to right it right. and we're touching their land and yep. we ask them to basically come to the city, it basically says they won't fight us or yeah, they, 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 they will petition us. And have to sign that? Mm -hmm. And then that transfers with the property? Yes, and then it goes and file with the register, yeah, I file it with the Register of Deeds office and so it follows the property, yep. All right, I'm going to make a motion to approve the plat for lot A of track one of the Pulaski edition. Second. Discussion? There's 51 acres there, essentially looks like they're just
Randall? Yes. Freneman? Yeah. Hugh? Yes. Jones? Yes. O'Hare? Yes. Mine. Yeah. Okay. Next one, reimbursement request for Western Meadows. I'll second. 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 Discussion? Second. There you go. Any discussion? We'll vote. O'Hara? Yes. Keel? Yes. Randall? Yes. Randall? Yes. Randall? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Yep. Monday night and